Hello and welcome to Terrier Talk, which is sponsored by Absolute Warehouse Services. I'm Adam Tomlinson and as always, I'm joined by Stephen Chicken from the Huddersfield Examiner. And this week, specially joined by striker Fraser Campbell. How are you both? You okay? Yep, I'm yeah. good, thanks. All good, yeah. Thanks, Adam. Fantastic. First of all, we'll start talking about the defeat against Nottingham Forest. Obviously, Steve, you were there the first time you've watched us since the season restart live, that is. Mm. What was your take on the game? Yeah, I thought it started really positively. And as you were approaching halftime, you were thinking, you know, that they're, they're looking good for at least a point here. And obviously the timing of the, of the two goals was um, was a big blow. Um, I, I imagine, Fraser, that, that, you know, Danny Cowley at halftime would have said, look, you, you've played well, forget about the goal. You know, we'll, we'll go again after the break, keep playing like that. We can we can get a draw and then, you know, get a goal and see where, where it takes us from there. And then you come out and within a minute, it's 2-0. Um, so, I mean, after the Wigan game, I think there's certainly positives. Um but yeah, th- three three defeats in a row for the first time in the Cowley's career. Um, obviously, le- leaves uh, leaves you with a lot to do. It's yeah. right to say there that there's more positives, though, right, Fraser, than than there was against Wigan, for example. We know you were at the director's box watching it. The Wigan game. Yeah, even the Wigan game. You know, I think we had seventy percent possession of, of of the ball in the game, so it's. You know, everything's magnified now because there's, you know, nine game, there's nine games left to play. But, in, you know, normally you think if you've got control of the ball for most of the game, you, you're going to dictate the, the pace of the play. You're going to have the better chances. And you're going to, you know, you're going to come away with, uh, you know, at least a point. But that's not how it, how it went in the winning game. Mm-hmm. Everyone was, you know, good, a bit disappointed on how that um, turned out. So it was important that we, you know, we this quick turnaround start the next game well and like Stephen said with the, the 43 minutes of the, the first half we were doing everything right we had some chances we were lucky not to be to to, to be a one nil up and then you concede two goals in in you know crucial parts of the game you know just before half time and then away from the second half and it, it kind of knocks the wind out of you but apart from the moments you know like we said we, we would be in the better teams if, if not, you know, at least deserving a drawing in, in both the games. Danny came out after that and said that the focus is just being on being more ruthless in both boxes, being physically stronger at the back and making sure we have that cutting edge when the chances fall, obviously, in the opposition's box. Is that something that he's really focused on during the quick turnaround, obviously, between Forest and Birmingham tomorrow? Yeah, you know, like you said, we, we, we analysed the game after after Wigan and one of those issues where you know, we're having a lot of the ball but we weren't getting into their box enough so the, the emphasis after that game was you know make sure you get in the ball and bodies in the box uh, give you a chance a, a chance to score some goals uh, um, so against Forest I think we I think we doubled as entries I think it was 50 something entries into their box which is miles better but again you know we just didn't get the bodies in this time so the emphasis has definitely been on putting bodies, you know, in opposition boxes, put yourself in positions to score some goals. At the same time, if you can shore up at the back and keep a clean sheet, we've got more than enough in our dressing room to, to grab goals. So it's, you know, if we can if we know that we're going to keep a clean sheet, then it'll make it a lot easier going forward. And Steve, obviously there's a lot of worried Huddersfield Town fans out there at the moment. Can you see the club? getting out of this difficult situation. Obviously, you've watched us all season and there has, like you said, been a steady improvement. Can, can you see it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, things haven't you know, gone to plan since, since, the, since the return from lockdown. But even taking, you know, I, I think it's fair to say Town have been quite all or nothing this season uh, in a lot of games. And uh, there's, there's definitely winnable games still left on the fixture list. Um, I think the, the the other big positive is, you know, 
that, that there was that improvement from the Wigan game to the Forest game, as Fraser says, in terms of box entries and things like that. So, yeah, I don't see any reason why you can't get out of it. Even if you take the bad games into account, since the Cowleys came in, that the rate at which you picked up might be more than enough to get you over the 50-point mark, even with just the seven games remaining. And Fraser, obviously, for you, you obviously returned back to action after the injury that you had during the kind of mini pre-season we had before the season restart. Yeah. How good was that for you to be back in action? Because I think it came earlier than what you originally expected. Yeah, um, it's, it's one of those things where you sat, I was sat in the box, like you said, against Wigan and it was just, it was, it was awful. You know, when you're not involved, you know, I'm with the lads every all day and um, then to come to the match the, the best day of the week and, you just sat there helpless. It's 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 awful. So it was for me on a personal. It was a positive to to be back out there, um, try and help the lads, give everyone a lift. You know, I'm, I've I've been around for a long time now, so I've been in situations like this before where you know people are looking for someone to you know help them, look up to uh, some experience, some advice or whatever. So it's not just on the pitch, but you know off the pitch of being around the place is you know it's it's a massive boost for myself and. Uh, massive hopefully it can be a, a positive for the, for the rest of the lads especially the younger lads um, in these remaining games yeah and I think I think if you are able to get back on the pitch as well Fraser from get a few starts you and you and, and Steve Mounier as well I think that'll make a big difference you know get being able to get Carlin out back onto the left because we saw that that combination up the left between you know Harry Toffolo Lewis O'Brien Fraser um, uh, Emil Smith-Rowe and, and Carlin Grant was really starting to look dangerous so being able to get players back in the favoured positions will be helpful and that's the thing in it you've been we've been doing the, the um, games before you know recreating them relationships like you said and getting a way of playing and then all of a sudden you, you you're missing um you know you know Carlin's moving out of his position that is adapted so well to to you know back to the f uh, number nine role and it's you know it's, it takes time to familiarize with different positions because it's not it's not just the same you're making different runs, you're getting the ball with, in different positions in the pitch. So it's, you know, he was in a good vein of form out on the left. And um, even the 30 minutes, 25 minutes that I came on, he, he looked much, you know, much more of a threat when he went back out to the side. And hopefully that now, like I said, me and Steve are there or thereabouts, you can, um, you can really, you know, kick on and score a bag full of goals for the rest of the season. The company name is Manrakem. We are process engineering design contractors. We are the hidden glue that makes the entire world work. Innovation is an interesting, uh, interesting subject. What we do is help people conceptualise their ideas. What we always say is, is that if somebody comes through our door with an idea, that we can normally find a way of helping them. Taking people's ideas and making it a reality is, is, is what we do. It must have been good for you to come on and have an impact pretty much straight away, obviously winning a penalty as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, you you want to help the team as much as you can. Um, I was, you know, I've been with the physios the last couple of weeks, so I was on allowed to play the, 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 the latter stages of the game. So it was, you know, just come on and just work hard for the team, get try and get something for the team. You know, I've got a penalty. But, you know, that penalty should have come in the first half, in my opinion, but you take what you can but yeah definitely going forward I hope to um, to be more involved in the game um, win some win some football matches bottom line that's all we're going to be setting out to do Talking of penalties Steve I was going to come on to that obviously there were two appeals one in the first half and then one in the second what were your thoughts on those because they both came at big points in the game that could have changed the dynamic completely Big time, yeah. I mean, the, the one on Alex Pritchard definitely was a penalty. Um, from from when where I was looking at it in the penalty box, I was pretty much in line. With, I was on the same side as the as the linesman, and I was in sorry, not in the penalty, in the corporate box. Um, thankfully, I wasn't in the penalty box. And uh, and uh, yeah, I, I didn't think it was a pen the first time I saw it, but then the, when you see the replay, it was immediately obvious that it was. Uh, I think the, the other one you're referring to is one on Lewis O'Brien in the yeah. second half. I don't think it was a penalty, to be honest. I, th I think he got the ball and it came back off Lewis and went out for the goal kick. So I think that was the right decision, to be fair. But the, the one on Pritch was an absolute stonewaller. And as you say, we've seen that 
and Danny Cowley talks about this a lot, the first goal changes the, the direction of the game and the town have won over 60% of the games where they've gone ahead. Um, so it really would have, have changed everything. Yeah, I could, I could see you saying Stonewaller there, Fraser. Stonewall, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I thought I was seeing something different and then he gave the penalty that I got and I don't personally think that was a penalty. But, you know, it happens in games. Hopefully we, we'll, um, it'll go in our favour next time. When you're in a position like we are, do you need that little bit of rubber the green almost? And how hard when you are in a position like us is it to then get that? Yeah, it seems like, you know, when you're not in great form, you don't seem to get anything, but, you know, it's, you're always looking for it. But, and then the times where you're flying and you seem to be getting everything, but you just got to maintain our focus. We know we're good players. We know we've got a lot of quality in our dressing room. We've, over the last two games, we've shown... Uh, some good stuff over the majority of games but we just need to stick to what we're good at and you know play some good football and hopefully that'll that'll change and we'll start getting them rubs of the green that we talked about and um, you know build that confidence in not just the players and staff but you know in the fans because it's you know it's when you can't do anything and you help us it's, it's often the worst so it's um, yeah bear with us we'll get there I'm sure we will and for you obviously it was your first time playing on the new normal of a, a football match walking <laughs> out walking out of the tunnel separate not shaking hands uh, yeah. or taking your jackets off next to the dugout does it lose that competitive edge almost because you're not facing off in the tunnel you, you're not feeling the atmosphere the pressure almost of of the big game in front of you yeah, it's, it's a bit weird, you know, when you, we play in the pre-season games and there's, you know, the slightly smaller crowd and there's nothing really on the game, so the tempo is a bit slower. It's, it's that kind of feeling, but obviously there's a lot on these games. Even the dressing rooms, like, you were sat, you'd have your own chair, like, two metres away with somebody else's chair and then you're in line and then there's lines behind you. So it was, there's no, like, vibe, no community kind of, like, normally you went to change a room, it's, like, small, you're all in there together. Do you know what I mean? You pack together as you're going to be on the pitch, you know, uh, a proper team. But then it's things a bit disjointed. Like I said, the first eleven go out first. The subs have got to wait for five minutes before they can go out. It's it's not ideal, but you know you can't you can't use that as an excuse. We've got to just play our football and focus on what we can control. I suppose that's where you on the pitch can come into your own when you are starting games again leading from the front, putting them under pressure, you really determine and start that tempo off for us. Yeah, the, the lads know what they're going to get with me. Um, I don't ask anyone to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. So if I'm shouting at you to make that run, you know, you know for a fact that I'm going to do that as well. And it's, and it's contagious. If they see me, you know, that person that's been around football for a long time, experienced it, and I'm trying, trying my best to get here, there and everywhere, you know, it's there, going to be right, right, I'm going with him, I'm going to follow him into battle, because that's what, that's what you need in these moments, um, you know, when you've got to fight for survival or whatever it is you're fighting for, it's, you've got to be stick together and if, if someone at the top of the pitch is leading you off and you go get right behind him, you, you know that you're going to have a great chance of, um, of doing something in the game. <laughs> Do you think that's what we're really missing, Steve? That kind of pressing from, from the front, dictating the tempo. So you have people, for example, there's Hoggy in the middle of midfield, but having that leadership and that tempo all over the pitch. Yeah, I, I think obviously Fraser's been a big miss off the ball because, you know, you're chasing down every loose ball and, and, and helping with that press from the front. And, and I don't think there's anyone else in the side that, that, that gets close to you from that, from that sort of, from that, in that front line. Um, but also, as as we mentioned, sort of on the ball as well, just having that that link up, whether it's you or whether it's Steve, just having that focal point, as Danny Cowley puts it, I think will make a big difference on the ball in, in getting that better incision. Um, 
inside the box uh, and around the box. But yeah, as you say, I imagine, and, and you tell me if I'm wrong, that when you've not got a crowd there, it's more on the players to, to drive that energy up and, and get the adrenaline going. Because we've seen a lot of games where there's, there's so few goals and so few opportunities in the first half and things start a bit tentatively and it feels like there's an opportunity there for if there's any teams that are able to sort of motivate themselves and get, get themselves, you know, going and get the energy levels up that, that you can exploit that and, 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 you know, get some results. Yeah, definitely. If, if you've got to, you've got to bring that yourself, and yeah, you got to spur it. Like if you get a chance, the crowd just up cheering, and you know, backing you to go and get another chance. You win a corner or something like that. They're, they're, out, they're being very vocal. So when they're not there, it's it, it can go a bit flat. So like I said, you got to, you've got to try and maintain that um, and try and make them feel that they're under pressure. You know, about the the added um, sound effects from the crowd. And there's a game now every three or four days. Steve, from now to the end of the season, fitness will obviously be a big part of it, won't it? You, you'll see which teams really flourish because the amount of work that they've put in during the, the off-season. Yeah, big time. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough for everyone, uh, but it is the same for everyone in that in that respect. And, you know, there has been a bit of a suggestion that it might be a survival of the fittest type situation so yeah fitness and and momentum and mentality all the things that uh you know that we talk about almost cliches really um i think really do take on a, a huge influence when when the schedule's as intense as this what's it been like fraser since the return to to training this week um my return to training or just in general everyone's the the old the whole atmosphere uh, it's, it's, you know, everyone was upset after the game, um, sat down, went over the game as, as, we, as we usually do. But I think the big thing for us this week was, you know, it's, it's not the um, performance that we've, we can look too much into. Obviously, you can go into it and pick bits and bats, but it's more a mental state. You know, people are talking a lot now. It's games going on at different times. Like obviously, we played on Sunday, so we saw the results on Saturday. I think the key for us is to just focus, make sure we focus on ourselves. Don't be looking at everyone else's results. Don't be reading comments from angry people on Twitter or Instagram and stuff like that. It's, it's all a distraction. And the only thing that we need to do is concentrate on ourselves and, and play our football because, like I said, we, we're more than capable of, of getting to that 50 point mark or whatever it's going to take. So we, we, we just need to focus on that. Never mind what everyone else is doing with 11 men against 11 men. And, you know, we'll, hopefully we can get the better of uh, most of the seven games that we've, we've got remaining. What would training look like between the games? Because I can imagine after a game you come in, you recover, and then you have a very yeah. quick turnaround, try and ingest as much information as possible before the next match. Yeah, exactly. So we played Sunday. Um, yes, the day we, we just did recovery and stuff like that, getting the, you know, the legs and the muscles and the mind back to where we need to be. And then today, you, you've got another game tomorrow, so you're doing your prep, uh, you're analysing the opponents, and then you're getting your legs going on the pitch again. But you know you don't want to be doing too much because you've still got a bit of Sunday's game in your legs and you want to be fresh for tomorrow. So this over these next few weeks, I think there's going to be very little training. It's going to be more... Uh, tactical meetings and things like that and you know just looking after ourselves at home eating the right things getting enough sleep and putting ourselves in the best possible position um, to be ready to, to play another game that be like mentally when you're trying to take on information against Forest and information against Birmingham and then Preston trying to figure out what you should do in certain situations how difficult is that it, it, it is difficult and it, it gets more difficult when you when you're tired you know we, we travel down to Nottingham travel back and things like that we've got 
travel to um, Birmingham. You know, it's, it's a lot of things you've got, to, but this is our job. You know, we're professionals and the, uh, there's much information you can retain, the better. It stands you in good stead for, you know, getting the better of your opponent on, on the next game. So it's, it is a lot. It is mentally tiring, but this is what it is. Um, you've got to test yourself and, and push yourself to, to, to your limit to if you want to improve as a, as a, as a person and, and as a footballer. So it's, it's, it's exciting, an exciting time ahead um i'm looking forward to you know playing all these games and you know proving some people wrong that thing you know we're, we're done for or whatnot i i like i like that challenge i don't i don't really feel pressure i encourage it so it's um i'm looking forward to these next few weeks steve is it it's almost like got a christmas feel to it again hasn't it games coming thick and fast yeah, I've got the tree up and everything. It's uh, <laughs> really getting into the spirit. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. And and some teams, I think, will deal with that better than others, as, as we've talked about. And, um, you know, I, I know that, that Town obviously had a lot of um, injury problems over Christmas, but still managed to get some some really good results in, in those games. And thinking of, you know, Blackburn and, and Forest, ironically. And, um, yeah, so... I mean, we've looked at the numbers before and we've, we have found that, that since the Cowleys came to town, their record in games where they've had three or four days prep is actually twice as good as, as games where they've had longer to prepare the team. So it feels like um, this might be a, a side and a management team that thrives on that schedule. And, and yeah, let's certainly hope so. Yeah, exactly. And, and Steve, again, with that quick turnaround, like you said, Focusing on Huddersfield Town and what we can do and, and our style over that course of time, not really thinking too much about what the opponents are doing, could really benefit us and what we're honing into with the Cowleys, what we, what we want to play like. Yeah, and we were seeing that, as I say, in, in February with the with the new signings. And I think, as we've touched on, not having Fraser or Steve available for to play at number nine has, has definitely sort of set that back a little bit. But... Well, there were positive signs that, that the side were doing that before the break. And yeah, that, and hopefully now that once we get a couple of injuries out of the way and people are getting re-familiarised with, you know, being on the pitch and playing competitive games, we'll start to see that again. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the shining lights from the Forest game, um, I think, was the return of Alex Pritchard. Obviously, he started his first game for a while and he looked very, very comfortable out there, didn't he, Steve? Yeah, I mean, to, to say that he's, I think, what, what was that, his third start in 10 months or something like that, I think. Um, he's, you know, he's, he's barely been able to play since the Cowboys because he's had his, his knee issue. Um, and, you know, I don't think anyone would, would say it was a, a 10 out of 10 performance, but it's another option that's available who, who brings something a little bit different to, to Emil Smith-Rowe. So, um, yeah, I, I know that the, the Cowleys were desperate to have just any number 10 before um, before ESR came to the club. And so to have two now um, will be a real boost for them, I'm sure. It must be great for you as well, Fraser, to look behind you and have the likes of Emil Smith-Rowe, Alex yeah. Pritchard, Carlin, Chris Willock, all those options that can feed the ball to you. Yeah, it's, you know, Pritch and Emil in the 10 role, they're both quality players, they both use either foot and can get past the player and, and they can pick a pass. So, you know, we've got two high quality number 10s and, um, you know, Carlin on the left and uh, Chrissy and even Catcher out there. You've got some, some real quality out wide as well. So it's, it's, it's always a, a, pos- a positive as a, as a forward when, you know, there's, the ball can come from anywhere. There's, there's, you know, you've got three, at least three options on the pitch that you know can um, create a chance for yourself, or they can create a chance for themselves and, and maybe get a goal. I think so. It's, it's nice to to have you know other goal scorers out there um, and good footballers. That's the main thing. Good footballing brains that can you know know how to play the game well. Yeah, and, and we saw. Well. Yeah. Sorry, Steve. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, and we saw how the attack was starting to click big time in the, the Charlton and the Bristol games before the break. And I know they feel like a very long time ago now for a lot of fans. Well, I suppose they were quite a long time ago, actually. But um, but they were two really, really good performances, like two of the best performances Town have put on for, for some years, I would say. Uh, and they came back to back. So if they can... You've shown that you can, if you can capture that magic again, things can suddenly click and things take on a very different complexion. Yeah, it's well within our capabilities. It's like I said, just 
hoping that it clicks sooner rather than later. And you know, we've, we've got seven games now to to get that back on track. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to to seeing some of them performances, like like you mentioned, Charlton one and things like that. And you know, get back out there and just enjoy our football, enjoy winning some games, and and and, and enjoy putting in a solid performance. Birmingham City up next. You scored against them at the John Smiths earlier this season, Fraser. What do you expect from them? It's a difficult one. You know, I think the, the, they've been all right before all this, of form-wise, but I think they're middle of the table. There's nothing really um, nothing really to play for as such. So it's, it's, um, it's one of them. You don't know what you're going to get. But like I said before, the main focus for us is, is to... You know, bring our best performance. You know, if we're in our top game, there's, there's very little teams that we have to deal with. So we've got to focus on ourselves. Hopefully, we can you know punish them and 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 come out with a three points at the end of it. You know, we, we really need to start getting points on the board. And whoever we're playing, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. We really need to to play well. Yeah, and they drew with Hull City at the weekend, Steve. How big of an opportunity is this? Yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity that, that you need to, to take, really, I think. Um, Birmingham draw an awful lot of games. I'm just looking at the results now, and, and they, they, they've they drawn, uh, I think, all but one of their last, what's that, seven, seven yeah. or eight league I mean, games? Their last seven. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, and but at the same time, you know, they were 2-0 down against Hull, and then they were 3-2 down against Hull, uh, and they still fought back to, to get the points. So, you know, although they're, they're one of the teams that have nothing to play for, and and, um, and those are the teams that we've, I think we've seen tend to be suffering sort of the shock results, they're all, they've not exactly got their feet up. So, yeah. Fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of them, Steve... What do you do? You expect something very different from when we played them earlier this season? Because obviously Pat Clotets, he's got his style in, in place. Like you said, they draw a lot of games, but style-wise, do you expect anything different? Um, I, I mean, it's it's a strange one because Clotet was not expecting to sort of come into this season as the full-time manager, and now, of course, it's been announced that he's leaving at the end of the season. So, mm. I imagine it will just be, as you say, a, a case of staying the course. Um, for them and just get through to the end of the season I think you know that they've had a, a tough couple of years um, off the pitch and I think they'll just be desperate to just get to the end of this season and and, and start looking forward to the next one. Uh, and Fraser I have to talk about your goal against Birmingham City earlier this season I don't know if you can remember it but it was that wonder pass from Trevor Chalaber that set you off. Yeah it was all about the pass really I just had to run in a straight line and finish it. <laughs> It's a great pass from Trev. Um, yeah, let's hope for some more <laughs> in the up and coming game. You said you don't feel pressure, you thrive upon it. Seven yeah. games to go, we're in the relegation zone. Before those games, do you feel pressure among the team, among the dressing room? Is there a tense atmosphere? Yeah, but it should always, like for me, before I play a game, I like to get myself up for the game, get your heart rate up and things like that. So there might be a tense atmosphere, but I won't, I won't call that pressure. Mm. You know, in the day we're playing a game and you've got to remember that. We, I'll try and get that message across to the lads. We're playing a game. We want to win this game, obviously, massively. So we're going to do as much as we can to, to get them three points. But don't let that pressure cripple you. Don't think, oh, I'm not going to take that pass because... You know, I'm scared or I'm going to go backwards or I'm going to take the easy road. It's, you know, nowhere worth going is, um, is the easy road. So, it's, you know, you've got to take that, make them hard decisions, make them hard runs and, and work hard for each other. So, it's, you know, it's something that I look forward to. You, you, you'll see the re real characters of, you know, some people that will be rolling the sleeves up and, you know, digging deep for the team. And that's exactly what we're going to need. Everyone to... to do their jobs to the best of their capabilities and, you know, give it all 
week in, week out, so that come the end of these seven games, we're, in, we're, we're where we deserve to be. Yeah, and you're playing for your, your hometown club. I can imagine how much it would mean to you to help Huddersfield Town stay in this division. Exactly. It's it's not just it's not just that. That's a, that added thing. You know, wherever I've been, every time I put on the shirt, I'm I'm super competitive. I hate losing. Uh, I, I don't ever want to lose. So after the losses on the last couple of games, it's really upset me. Last when I've come home and things like that. So it's it's not a feeling that I enjoy, and it's not a feeling that I want going forward. So you know, I'll be pushing every single player. Um, every single member of staff, to, you know, to give it their all, and you know, just do the best. If you if you try your best and you come up short, then no one can say anything to you. But the very least you can do is is you know put 110 percent in and, and and see where that takes you. Steve, I'll leave you with the final thoughts. Yeah, uh, massive game, but every game's a massive game now. So, you know, we're all just going to have to get used to it. But, yeah, I mean, I think everyone just, just needs a win, um, you know, every, at all levels of the club and, and, and particularly the fans. And, yeah, hopefully it's, uh, it's on its way. You look nervous already, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confident, Fergus Fraser. I'm confident. Yeah, good. Guys, I'll thank you back. very much for joining us. Huddersfield Town fans. Thank you for watching and you can watch Huddersfield Town away at Birmingham City on iFollow HTAFC kickoff at 6pm.